Thanks for coming, everyone. My name is Abe. I'm an engineer on the Firebase team. I'm here with Damien, a developer advocate on games. And I just, first, I want to say how amazing it is to be here in Berlin. I'm super excited. It's been an amazing experience so far. I feel super welcome, especially once I realized that the UX team put that tiny drawing of me on the beanbag in every single presentation. So now I feel like I'm really the focus of everything, and that's absolutely amazing. So I'm here to talk about Firebase for games, and then in, in smaller text, pew, pew, pew. That's like a game noise. You know, see, we're, we're bonding already. This is going great. So if we look at Firebase, you've, you've probably seen this slide before. Uh, you literally saw it in the previous presentation. This is the 15 products that come together to make Firebase, uh, the suite of tools we've put together for building mobile apps. But I'm not here to talk about mobile apps today. I'm here to talk about games. And I think if you look at these products, some of them work really well for games, just obviously, like Firebase authentication. You, know, you want your user to log in with Facebook. You don't want to write a bunch of code to do that. Firebase authentication makes perfect sense. Or something like you know, uh, Firebase uh, real-time database. You want to be able to store data, synchronize it between users. It just makes sense. But as a whole, I think in order to make Firebase for games, we have to take a unique approach. And we are really, really serious about making Firebase work great for games. And so when we started talking about this, I did what I always do when we start you know, talking about building something for a different audience or building something different. I started talking to our users. So I was at GDC last year, and I went around to a bunch of people. And I'm always wondering, how can I make my users' users' lives easier? Because that's really, you know, that makes them successful if their users have a better time. And that makes me successful and everyone's happy. So I went up to a game developer and I said, how can I make your users' lives easier? And the first thing he said was, well, they're called players for one. And I was like, fair enough, good point. And I went up to another person and I said, all right, how can I make your players' lives easier? And he, he looked at me, and he was kind of confused, and he, he didn't really have an answer for me. And I spent all day doing this. I, I hung around the Google booth, and I kept asking people, how can I make life easier for your players? And no, no one could really give me an answer. And it wasn't until the end of the day when someone, he was wearing a top hat and overalls, because game developers are like that sometimes. And I said, how can I make life easier for your players? And he said, I, I don't really want that. And that's, that's when it clicked for me personally, that games are not like apps. We're not trying to make life easier or more productive or anything like that. We're trying to make an experience that's really unique, that you're passionate about, that you're engaged with in a different way than you'll ever engage with an app. These are completely different experiences. And if we want Firebase to work really well for games, we have to take an entirely unique approach. We, we can't do a, a, a half-quality job. So I, I want to talk about this quote from a guy named John Carmack. If, if you know about games, you've probably heard of him. He was a lead programmer on Doom. Now he works uh, or runs Armadillo uh, Aerospace. I forget. But he programs rockets now, because that's a normal career trajectory, I guess. And he once said that the, the game designer should be building a world in which the player is not just a small part. The player is the boss. And I think this is true outside of games, it really doesn't matter if you're building an app or you're like, working in a company. You don't want to be a small part of anything. You want to be the focus. You want to feel like the experience that you're interacting with, the world around you, is interacting with you and that it's really rich and connecting with you. And this is why at Firebase, the core of this beautiful graphic is analytics, and the core of our philosophy is analytics because this is a representation of your players. You, you don't just have players, though. That's too, it's too general. It's too vague. We have your players in main, the ones who are really good at the game because they played the sequel, the ones who got through the first 10 levels in minutes because they're just really excellent. And with analytics, we have those players in Nevada who have never gotten past level four. They're really horrible at your game. They're literally the worst players, but they're having fun, and they keep trying again and again at level four. And this is the power of analytics. Because if we have a user, we have this guy, and he, he, is, he is that power user out in Maine. He is, he is the really exceptional, great player. And we release a hardcore level pack. This guy's going to want to know. But if we released it, if we just like, you know, shouted it out, sent a push notification to every single user of our app, and said, hey, we've released this new hardcore level pack, a bunch of them 
would be intimidated. Those level four players who are stuck on that same level, they're going to look and say, I, I can't even get past level four. I didn't need to know about the uber hardcore death mode ultra pack. It just wouldn't connect with them. And it might even make them shy away from your app. So if we know who these people are and we can target them and say, hey, you know, this app, this package, this experience is for you, we can get them more involved. So we shoot him a push notification with an audience we created in analytics, and now he's more engaged. And this is an experience made possible with cloud messaging and Firebase notifications. Both of these, I, oh, there you go. I think this clicker might be dying. Uh, both of these are products we've talked a lot about today. And this philosophy of Firebase being good if you use one component, like just cloud messaging alone is fine if you want to set up your own server and send individual messages to individual devices, that's great. But if you want to use it with Firebase notifications or you want to use it with the power of analytics, you can. And that's really where you get this compounding value effect of Firebase. Let's take another example. The same player. It's a really, really great player. He, he is one of the best players we've ever had. His, his gummy clan is level 200. He is just really, really top of the leaderboard, excellent player. But it's, it's frankly not all skill. He has been spending a ton of money on fire coins on this in-app currency and just buying everything he possibly can. And, but, but he's a great player. He's super engaged with our game. He's having fun. He really is passionate about this experience we've created. And he's so passionate that one day he, he spends all his coins. He's run completely out of fire coins. And what, well, what can he do? In a normal situation, you might have to wait for you know, 24 hours to pass so he gets some more fire coins, or you might have to you know, spend some more money, buy some more in-app currency. But with Firebase, this opens up new opportunities that not only help him get more engaged with the game, but also brings us new users. So imagine we give him a beautiful link, a nice little short link that he can share with his friends. And those friends come into the game, and he gets rewarded with you know, some fire coin. So he sends out that link, he waits a little while, and he's 100,000 fire coins richer. This is great, because now his friends are sharing his experience. He's not just some lone nerd building his gummy kingdom up. He's, a, he's one part of a bigger group of people who all love this game, who he can, ex he can talk to about, he can share this experience with, and it's just richer for him. And at the same time, we get a better experience as a developer because we potentially found people like him who will also love our game, and that's our end goal. And, and yeah, and he's just, he's just having a great time. He's back to spending all his fire coin. This is an experience made possible by tying together a bunch of these Firebase features. So we used invites to say, all right, who are your friends? Who should we contact? We use a dynamic link to give him that custom link he can share. We use cloud messaging to tell him when he's received his fire coin. And we use real-time database to track how many fire coin he has. This is great, though, because it's not just one feature. And in Firebase in gaming, we support a bunch of these features today. This isn't a new thing that we're announcing. This has been possible in the gaming world via the C++ SDK since Google I.O. When we re released the C++ SDK, we were super excited because we knew game developers who were writing in C++ were going to be immediately able to start building richer experiences for their players. And people have really, really loved the C++ SDK. So to talk about it a bit more, I'm going to hand it over to Damien, who will talk a little bit about the code uh, and how to use the C++ SDK. Damien? Hey, thanks, Abe. Uh, so I'm Damien. Uh, I joined Google about two years ago. Before that, I've been doing game development during seven years, six years and a half, something like that, uh, for iOS, Android, and, and, and other platforms, consoles. Uh, so yeah, chances are, chances are, if you are doing video games, uh, you are likely doing C++. Either you are writing your own engine and doing C++ directly, either you are using an engine that is itself written in C++. So if you want to have a plugin for that engine, you are likely want to have a C++ API. Um, and, and well, I keep quoting John Carmack uh, here. Uh, like, focus is a matter of deciding what things you aren't going to do. And I feel that it fit quite well what Firebase uh, is about. Like, if you are a game developer, it's likely you don't want to spend time doing backend development. What you want to spend time on is your gameplay experience, how happy you make your user, what are the feelings your user are going to express when they go through your game. Uh, and again, like Firebase is something that will help you focus on what you do best, which is doing gameplay, de doing gameplay de development. And well, we can clearly see that if we show some sample code for the C++ API. Like, for example, that's the initialization of Firebase uh, on Android. It's 
more or less the same API on iOS. Uh, like in, in an Android side, you give your GNI environment and GVM information to the C++ SDK so he can communicate with the Java side of things. But that's one line of code. And it's not that difficult. Uh, right after that, if you try to initialize Firebase Analytics, it's one line of code to initialize Firebase Analytics. And out of that, you already get all the default analytics information from Firebase Analytics, like your session time, your first open, when the user opened a dynamic link, receive a notification, etc. If you want to then track an event, it's again one line of code with the event name, your parameters, and the value of your parameters. Well, if we go through remote config, there is no big surprises there one line of code to initialize, uh, and then you will get one line of code to fetch value from the server, and one more line of code to act activate the value from the server. We already talked about remote config, so I won't go through how it works. Uh, but yeah, when you, once you fetch the value from the server, if you are in the middle of a game and you are changing one of the parameters of the remote config will be the color of the sky, you might not want to switch the color of the sky from blue to green in the middle of the game. You might want to wait for the end of the session to activate your value before uh, they take effect. Um, so yeah. If you look at App Invite, it's again one line of code to initialize App Invite, and then a couple of lines of code that describe the content of your invite, and one line to send the invite and display the UI to the user. As a game developer, you probably doesn't really love making UI for your users, so Firebase take care of displaying your, content, uh, your contact list, so you can select which user you want to share the invite with. If you look at Firebase messaging, if you just do the first line of code, the initialization part, you already get notification to work in your C++ game or, C or, or um, game engine. And well, right after that, you can go in your Firebase notification dashboard, send your notification, and it will appear in your game. If you want to receive notification while the game is in foreground, uh, you can then register a callback uh, if you want to be able to display the notification when the game is in foreground. If, well, um, C++ is great. Lots of games are made just uh, in C++, but there is more out there. Uh, there is other game engine, and I will give it back to Abe to talk about Unity. Awesome. Thanks, Damien. Yeah, like Damien said, C++ is amazing if you're building you know, something that's an engine, or you're just building in C++ because that's what you like to work in. But when we started talking to game developers, we realized that, yeah, a lot of them love C++, and that's great, and we want to support them but a lot of them don't. We have amazing new games coming out every day that are written in these new engines and in this new technology, and we wanted to support that. And it's not only that, but C++ and our SDK doesn't have to be used for games. It's a general purpose programming language. Any mobile app you're building can be built with the C++ ND, uh, SDK and the Android NDK and all of that stuff. And we wanted to tell people, we are so serious about gaming, we're going to build an SDK that is specifically integrated into a gaming technology, into a gaming engine that wasn't just a library you imported, but an entire UI that becomes in, uh, part of the IDE that feels natural and makes, makes sure you know that we're serious about gaming. And that's why we released the Firebase Unity SDK. And this is something that I personally am extremely excited about, because whether you are like me, and you're the type of game developer who, who hangs out on like r slash roguelike dev and like is a horrible game developer, or if you're a top 100 company you know, who's building the next gigantic you know, whoever app featured, featuring celebrities that's going to get a trillion downloads, or if you're someone in between, like my friend Pim, who uh, is running a startup based on, based on Firebase-powered games. The, any, anywhere in between, you can use this Unity SDK, and it will support you. And when you use it, it's going to feel good. It's going to feel natural. Installing it in Unity is as simple as dragging in an asset package, just like you'd get from the Unity store or anywhere else. And then once it's installed, you get this beautiful sidebar that has links to documentation, options for configuring and setting up individual Firebase features, and basically everything you need to know to get up and running so you don't have to Google anything. Because it's really great when at Google, we can make you not have to Google anything. So to talk about what we can do with this Unity SDK, we'll go back to Damien to show off this live demo that we put together using the Firebase Unity SDK and the survival shooter demo from uh, the Unity website. So yeah, just before the, the presentation, we started making this live demo. So if, I, if you can see my screen, uh, I have 
notification integrated because on Unity it's basically linking a plugin and you have zero line of code to put there. So you link the plugin and you can already send the, send the notification. When you click on it, you can launch the game. Uh, there it is. No, it's in blurry. That's how I oh, like my games. Okay. That's better. I don't have sound, so I should be all right. And that's uh, based on a tutorial project uh, by Unity called uh, Survival Shooters, where you have this small character dreaming about scary puppies. Uh, oh, yeah, you can't see it really well. And you can see that when I am shooting, I have a blue ray gun. Oh, that's a big elephant. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so if I, if I die, you will see the color of the, of the, the uh, ray that leaves the gun switch to... Uh, OK, today demos are failing. It's because I am in airplane mode, because I am on stage. Oh, yeah, so it can't fetch OK, the, uh, so I can't fetch data config. out of remote config. Mm -hmm. In remote config, I, I, I change the parameters of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the color of the, of the gun. So let's try to die again. It's so difficult when you're such a talented gamer to die, right? Yeah, hopefully the controls are, are quite hard when you are not handling. Yeah, I have no luck there. Well, I, I, I will skip the, this part of the demo. But I, I am fetching the color of the game from, uh, from uh, remote config, so it should change the color at the end of the gameplay. Uh, and I also have integrated app invite, so you can invite people um, uh, from, from your contact list in, uh, in the game. And like, now I will switch back to the slides. Um, the idea is doing like remote config, analytics, um, notification, and app invite. Took me about maybe one hour to do in Unity. It was fairly quick uh, and, and really, really easy to, to do. And I will go through just some sample code ab about it. So if you look at just the initialization of Firebase, it's two lines of code. It's not as good as C++, but we are getting there. <laughs> and if you look at Firebase Analytics, it's one line of code for the initialization and then one line per, per event. In the game, I added two events, one when the player um, die, and another one where you actually take down uh, an, an enemy. And in the console, it looked like, yeah, you, you can see it a bit. Like the first event is when the player died, and the second event is how many enemy you killed. And you can see the values of the enemy killed is 102, I think. And the value of uh, how many people uh, were killed when you, before a player died is 101. So it looked like there is one, one enemy that actually was killed and the player survived. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's again like very easy one line of code to, to do it. If you look at remote config, it's a, bit, it's a bit different because, well, remote config has default value when you can't uh, fetch the server the first time, like it was the case during the demo, because I had no internet. So during the initialization, you need to give the default value of each uh, vari variable you have. And then it's, again, one line of code to fetch and, and, and activate the, the values. And on the console side, you already saw it in the presentation before, so I, I will go quickly uh, through it. But you can have all your uh, variable names and, and values that are based on various audiences in Firebase Analytics if you want to. Or if you want to do A-B testing, you can use remote config just for that. And if you look at Firebase uh, messaging for notification, I looked quite hard for sample code, because as I said, you just link the Firebase plugin uh, for notification. and it just work. You have zero line of code to put there. Uh, however, if you want to support uh, messages that are received in foreground when the game is, is displayed on, on the screen, you can add, uh, add an optional call, uh, callback there. Uh, but that's, again, only if you want to you support notifications that uh, you, the user receives when the game is in foreground. And on the console side, you already saw it in the, in the presentation before. Uh, it's about uh, being able to send notification to your, all your users or a subset of your user based on audience or filtering on user language, country, uh, app version, platform, etc. Finally, if you look at the Firebase app invite, uh, it was like one line of code to create the invite, a couple of lines to get the content of the Advanced setup, and then one line to, to send it. It's quite nice in uh, Unity to be able to do quite complex uh, native UI integration with just a few lines of code without writing any Java code, uh, complex plugin to interface with Unity, etc. And now I will give it back to Abe to talk about cross-platform. Awesome. Like I said before, 
one part of Firebase, if you're using remote config, is made richer by analytics, and analytics is made richer by authentication. And we have all this connection inside of Firebase, inside of your Unity game, that makes the experience richer for your users. But things get even better once you get outside of a single app. So imagine you have you know, a really great mobile game, and you really want to have a web leaderboard for that game. This is something Firebase makes possible with our web SDKs. Or if you have a web-powered game or some other desktop game, and you really want to have uh, a, 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 a mobile interface for a user to manage their inventory, this is something that just feels natural, because we've put a ton of effort into each of these individual SDKs. So each SDK feels natural. It feels like normal Android code, or it feels like normal JavaScript. But it's also very Firebase-y, so that the things you learn and the experience you have building in Unity will apply and speed up development on every single platform. But the value of integrating doesn't stop here. It goes outside of Firebase to the rest of Google. And Firebase is powered in, in large parts by Google Cloud, this amazing platform for building uh, anything your heart desires. You know, Firebase is a bunch of specific tools and features, but if you say, I'm building a game and I, I love Firebase, I, I powered my chat and my matchmaking off of the real-time database, and all my users get notifications with remote config, but the gameplay of my game is a first-person shooter. This is something you can't really build entirely on Firebase. So you need some awesome you know, enterprise-grade infrastructure to power this. This is where Google Cloud comes in. And the cool thing about Google Cloud and Firebase is that they're really close siblings. So if you had, for example, Firebase Analytics, and you had all of these events coming in through Firebase Analytics, all of your player deaths and everything like that, you can route those directly into Google Cloud Platform's BigQuery. And in BigQuery, you'll have the ability to slice and dice the data in any way you want. You can export it to Data Studio, like we talked about, use those new templates, anything like that, and really dig into your data. Or if you have other data, for example, if you have an existing game and you have some, you know, one of the many other analytics tools out there, and you're like, OK, that tool is great, but I really would love to mix that with this Firebase Analytics data. You can do that in BigQuery, and then you can pull it back out through Data Store. Or if you just want a dump of all your data, you can do that because Firebase integrates so tightly with Google Cloud. Another example of this is like Firebase Storage. Firebase Storage is backed directly by Google Cloud Storage. So if you're uploading a bunch of files and your users are manipulating them and doing whatever, and you want your server to go and access these files, or you want your cloud VM to do you know, some interaction on these or run it through the Cloud Vision API to see if there's a, you know, a, a labradoodle or whatever in that image, anything like that, you can do that very easily because Firebase Storage is backed directly by Google Cloud Storage. And it, that, this is an amazing experience if you want to integrate out, if you want to connect all these little pieces. But at the end of the day, you don't really have to. Firebase itself stands alone. And every single one of these features stands alone. So if you're thinking, man, like remote config sounds really cool. I'd love to give that a try. You can do that. You can go and grab just remote config, grab just that asset package, uh, import it, and give it a try without needing anything else that you don't want. And I'm pretty sure once you try these things, you'll realize that it works really well. And you'll probably be like, well, I wonder how much better it works with everything else. And you'll see the power you get from integrating everything together. And once you do this, as, as we're focusing on our players and we're building richer experiences, you'll find that that same player who used to be sort of engaged and used to have fun with your app becomes like truly, truly in love with it and, and keeps coming back again and again. So some resources, Firebase platform as a whole is firebase.google.com. The C++ SDK is uh, slash docs slash CPP. And the Unity SDK is docs Unity setup. Uh, I, I really would just like to say in general, we've, we've been working on this. We've talked to a bunch of Unity developers and really put a lot of love into this SDK because personally, I really love Unity and I want to build really cool things with it. So if you can, if you, you know, go play with it, even if you build like a two-hour game or something that you build on a weekend or whatever, please tweet at me and show me, because I'm just super, super excited to see what you guys build with this. So I'm at Abe is Great on Twitter. Damien is at Yindi, I believe is how that pr is pronounced. And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening. Cool.